Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back. I've had lots of comments from people recently asking about certain cars, you know, wanting to know whatever happened to them. Whenever I do a I bought a cheap dot 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 video, I try and round off the videos nicely, but some of you I think just want some closure. So today I thought I'd go through some of the more interesting ones with you and finish the story. Alright, let's get started. I did two videos recently with two C-Class Mercedes, a black C-Class Estate and a silver C-Class Saloon. After the videos finished, within a week or so, both water pumps failed, almost at exactly the same time. So I can add another £380 to each of those total bills. The silver one's still for sale, but the black one sold immediately. Ah, do you remember the green Mini Clubman that I bought with no second gear? I had the gearbox repaired or rebuilt or whatever they did, then it sold straight away, and within a week the guy brought it back because third gear had failed. So it went back to Tameside Transmissions and it had a third gear rebuild as well. That I think was under warranty, so there was no charge. Ah, the gold S-Class Mercedes that took me to John O'Groats. Now, I've done an interesting deal with that. I'm not going to tell you what I've swapped it for because there's a separate video for that coming soon. But I got an email from a guy asking if I wanted to do a straight swap for something which I thought was quite interesting. Now, I can't tell you. I can't reveal much more than that. But I did do a straight swap for the gold S-Class for this new whatever it is. I advertised the gold S-Class for what it owed me, but it still had some issues. So I listed all the faults that I, that I knew about. Bear in mind I'd done 1,200 miles in this car, so I did know it quite well. I listed all the faults and I just thought, I can't be more, more brutal than that. I knew it was never gonna sell for a profit, so I thought by doing a straight swap for something else that's quite interesting, then who knows, I might make some profit from that one. We shall see. A lot of these that I'm looking through actually sold for the asking price. I can't sit here and rattle off every single car because this video would be about an hour long. But I suppose the reason I don't wait until they're sold to finish a video is that sometimes, sometimes they sell within a couple of days, but other times they take a couple of months. And I've always got loads of videos on the go, so I just need to get them finished and then, you know, put them up on the internet. If I had to wait until they sold before I could say, right, that one sold for £4,000, I might be sitting around waiting for videos to end, you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks. I suppose the other thing to mention is they do mostly sell for the asking price, so there isn't much of a story to tell with some of them. Take for example this Toyota MR2. I had that for sale for maybe six weeks, and it sold for 3495 Do you remember my haunted Honda Civic that I bought for £400? That one ended up getting crushed. I think I got, I think I got £300 back for it. So it was a bit of a shame because I wanted to save that. It had only done like 30 odd thousand miles and I thought there was some life left in it, but that wasn't the case. Ah, this Aguila. Do you remember the red Aguila? It was quite scruffy. I bought it for £600, spent, I think, another six or £700 on it, then I sold it for 1995 Sold it to, I think he was a viewer of the channel, actually. He had it for about a month or two, and then traded it in for the Citroen Belinga that I did a video with. He needed something bigger for his dog cage in the back, and the Aguila, obviously, has a boot about that big. So he traded the Aguila back in with me. I think I paid him £1,500 or something back for it, and then sold it again for 1995. So that was quite a good deal, really. And all in all, I think, well, um, there was seven or eight hundred pounds profit the first time, and then four or five hundred pounds the second time. Ah, my 1994 Mercedes SL320 that I massively overspent on. I love that car, but I'm really not using it that much. And I've got lots of other project cars on the go. Some you know about and others you, you don't yet, but you will soon. So I thought the best course of action for that would be to put it onto Raffle Shack. It's currently live at the moment, so if you're interested, I'll leave the link below in the video description. Also on Raffle Shack at the moment, if you want something a bit newer and a bit faster, well, more than a bit faster actually, is my BMW M4. That's available with just over a week to go, so be quick. My little Fiat Panda's still in Spain, you know about that one, don't you? I need to do another video with that really, but I haven't got around to it yet. Before we continue, I've got to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. If you want to protect yourself while you're shopping online or doing online banking, then you really need to check out Surfshark. They're a VPN service provider. It protects you so that all your data and your details and your IP address are hidden, so cyber thieves can't view it. In addition to that handy feature, it blocks malware, phishing, ads, and other kinds of nastiness, which in turn can spit at your bandwidth and make your device stream things much more quickly. The last thing I want to do is get my car details stolen or my bank details hacked, and since I've been using Surfshark, touch wood, that just hasn't happened. Another good thing about Surfshark is you can change your location settings so you can watch your favourite content from online streaming services like Netflix. You know how sometimes you want to watch a show or a film and it says it isn't available? Well with Surfshark you can change your location settings so that it thinks you're in a different territory, then all of a sudden it becomes available. You can download the app very easily from the App Store and you can use it on multiple devices. It's cheap and easy to use. 
We're all online a huge amount of time these days, so you just don't know how much information you're putting out there, so it's better to be protected rather than not. Especially if you frequently use insecure public Wi-Fi spots, such as at airports, train stations and other places. If you're interested in checking out Surfshark and you want to get an even better deal, then use my promo code HYPECORTOS and you'll get three months extra, totally free. Or click the link below in the video description. Or visit surfshark.deals forward slash HYPECORTOS. And thanks Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Oh, do you remember the white Jaguar XF? It was an XFS. A really nice car with a, with a wad of service history. I sold it to a really nice couple actually, and within about a month it broke. Some sort of cracked inlet manifold and a broken spring. They wanted to reject the car, sent me threatening letters, all that sort of stuff. In the end, I booked it in with Elite Jaguar, who are a, um, actually they're called Elite Cars, but the Jaguar Land Rover Specialists. They're always busy. They're down in Stockport. So I booked that in with them, and I think my bill with, with them was about a thousand pounds, but it got sorted, and the customer is now quite happy, I think. I think the profit on that car was quite healthy. It might have been, I can't remember the top of my head. I think it was a couple of grand. So a thousand pounds of that has been, been wiped out. My cheap L322 Range Rover, the black one with the beige interior that I bought for £1,250, I've still got. I'm still running around in that. In fact, I went home in it last night. I don't use it all that often, to be honest, because this is kind of the trouble with having multiple cars. You just don't use them. I got to the Range Rover yesterday and it had a flat battery, so I boosted it and thought, I better use this. And yeah, it drove me home perfectly yesterday. Not a single warning light. And I really like that car. It's still not finished, I still need to address the bodywork. I want to get the front bumper painted and the rear bumper and the door handles and give it a good buff. But eventually I'll get around to that. Ah, while we're on the subject of Range Rovers, my 4.2 litre supercharger, remember that one that I bought? re 6 WLF was the reg. And it was an absolute nail. I paid I think, two and a half grand for it. As much as I love Range Rovers, that really wasn't worth rescuing. I seem to remember it made loads of weird noises. I was sat in it and then got the fright of my life when the air suspension compressor went, started going mad. I sold that one for £2,000 and made a loss of, well, I think it owed me two and a half plus transport. So yeah, I made a loss of about £700 on that one. But, well, I was going to say you live and learn, but I don't. My 300,000 mile Volvo XC70. Now, if you remember, I just wasn't really using it. So I put it on the Raffle Shack website and the winner was a guy down in Wales somewhere. Then I saw on some sort of Volvo forum, somebody shared this to me, shared a screenshot of it. He was trying to sell it on eBay. So it sold for, I don't know, a couple of grand or something. And whoever then bought it has now tipped it over the 300 mark and he's still using it. I think he's had a cam belt done. I can't remember now, I got so many messages. I think he might have messaged me recently, you know, or somebody did anyway, to say that he still loves it. So I'm quite glad I saved that one really. I've got fond memories of that old car. But everyone did keep taking the mick out of me for using that constantly. With the cars at my disposal, the fact that I was choosing to drive around in that 300,000 mile Volvo just, I suppose, marks me out as a bit of a weirdo, but... Oh well. Ah, I'd forgotten about that car. Do you remember the cheap Phaeton that I bought? I bought a cheap VW Phaeton for a thousand pounds. I think it is... It only done 70 or 80,000 miles and I think it had one owner from you, but it was very scruffy and very broken. I sold that to a mate of mine who then found a donor vehicle from a scrapyard and replaced the rear windscreen that was cracked, replaced loads of bits and pieces on it. He had it for, what date was that posted? January? He had it for about six months. So he completely swapped it all over and, and got it through an MOT again. He had it for about six months, then traded it back in with me for something else. And then I sold it because it still had some faults. Although he'd swapped loads of bits and pieces over, it still had some issues. So I sold it as spares and repairs. Right, my AMG GTS. This is a car that I thought I'd never sell. And I've had it for coming up to two years, I suppose. It was a bit of a dream car for me. And it probably, in all honesty, a bit of a midlife crisis car. I just bought it on impulse. I love the color, I love the car. Um, but then I just realized I'm not using it an awful lot. So I keep putting it up for sale and then taking it back down again, then putting it up, then taking it back down again. I suppose it is up for sale, really. People keep messaging me asking why it's up for sale and have I got something exciting on the way? And the honest answer is no, I don't. The reason really I'm trying to sell it or occasionally try to sell it is just to free up some money. I've realized that I love cars, but I'm not, I just don't have the time to, to drive them all the time. And also I've sort of reached a point where I would quite like some, I don't know what the right terminology is, some sort of financial security, I guess. That's probably more important to me than having another car sat in my garage that I don't really use. So I think as and when it does sell, I'll end up just paying a mortgage off or some 
debts off or you know that sort of thing. That's probably what I'll do. Quite a boring answer that, isn't it? But you asked, didn't you? Right, here's a car I'm always asked about. Uh, back in on the 12th of December last year, I posted a video called I bought a cheap Range Rover, in brackets, my dream spec. If you remember, it's a Givenchy green with a green leather interior and no privacy glass. And it's the 4.4 litre Jaguar V8. I haven't got round to doing a part two video because it's still waiting for paintwork. It's down at my body shop right now. Jimmy keeps doing bits to it and it's looking really good. It was a bit scruffy on the body. So he's painted the front and back bumpers, he's painted the side panels, he's fitted some new vents. It's looking really good. So in the hopefully not too distant future, I'll have a part two video for that. But I think, I think that's only done 70, 77,000 miles. So I think I'll probably keep that. God knows when I'm gonna use it, but it is my dream spec, as I say. So I don't really wanna get rid of that. Ah, oh, this is an interesting one, actually. I say interesting. I got a letter through the other day to say, I've been caught driving I think it was a speeding fine or something. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was a reminder because there was no road tax on the car and it had been seen parked on a public road with no road tax. And I was trying to rack my brain thinking, I can't even remember that car. And it was this pale blue Fiat Punta that I bought for £350. I sold it to a mate of mine who then sold it, sold it on eBay or something. And somebody somewhere hasn't put it in the correct person's name. So it was still showing as me being the last registered owner. So I filled it in to say who I'd sold it to and then popped it in the post. This happens quite a lot with cheaper cars. They're often used for, uh, I'm not saying this one is by the way, but cheaper cars like this are often, they often find their way into lower down, lower league criminals and they're used for nefarious activities. Ah, the Citroen C5. Now somebody, a viewer, a YouTube viewer actually gave me that car for free on the proviso that I donated it to Ukraine. So a friend of mine actually through Instagram who's uh, British Ukrainian, has driven over there loads of times with cars that people from, you know, viewers like yourselves have donated or that I've, um, you know, had in part exchange or things like that. So we've done it maybe half a dozen times or maybe more than that, maybe eight times. And the Citroen C5 was filled with medical equipment and supplies and all that sort of stuff. And then he drove it over to Ukraine. Oh, this one's a bit of a nightmare. The cheap VW EOS. This was October last year, wow, 12 months. I bought a cheap VW EOS for, was it a thousand pounds or 1200 pounds? It was quite cheap because it was a really good spec. Black with a red leather interior, heated seats, electric everything, sat nav, had everything on it. But it needed thousands spending on it. I sold it to a friend of mine who spent thousands on it. He had a new cam belt fitted, cam belt and water pump. He had a new clutch and dual mass flywheel. The roof wasn't working, so he had that fixed at a VW roof specialist. And those exists. That cost a thousand pounds, I think. He spent thousands of pounds on it. He had it for about six months, then I bought it back of him, and now I've got it for sale. So uh, I think I lost money on it. He lost an awful lot of money on it, and it's currently for sale for 3995, I think. Somebody there is gonna get a well-sorted car. Ah, oh, well, you win some, you lose some, don't you? Ah, right, okay, this is another interesting one. I bought myself a BMW 330Ci convertible. This was Oxford green, I was gonna say Alpine green. It was Oxford green with a tan interior. I bought that from Christian down at Heel and Toe Cars and I just saw it on his Instagram one day and thought, I've got to have that. It had Alpine wheels on it, it was just a beautiful car. So again, I bought it thinking I'll keep this forever. It's a cool car to use on a Sunday. Had it for maybe two months, three months, realized I wasn't using it, so sold it. This is probably a bit repetitive now, isn't it? But I just, uh, you're probably the same. Petrol heads, I don't know what you do. You just sit there every night on your, on your laptop or on your phone looking at cars that you've got absolutely no purpose for. I still do it. I do it all the time. My watch list on Autotrader and eBay is sad. In reality, I know some people have got like a large watch collection or something. You can only wear one at one time and you can only drive one car at one time. So there's no need to have more than two or three. And yet I want 12, I want 20, I want, I want 35. Ah, right. I suppose I can't do a video like this without mentioning this cheap Jaguar. I bought a very cheap, so I thought, Jaguar XE for £4,000. The bodywork was quite poor and I didn't realise that at the time. It done 102,000 miles. It was that bulletproof 2-litre diesel Ingenium engine. Uh, I think I spent a couple of grand on it and then I sold it for £9,000. So it was quite a good deal. I think I made maybe £2,000 profit. Sold it to a guy, I think he was a YouTube viewer actually, in Northern Ireland somewhere. He flew over, bought it, picked it up and, and drove it back. About three or four months later, he had an issue with the timing chain. Now, if you remember from the video, I'd actually had the timing chain replaced. So that job was still under warranty. So I took it back to the engine specialist place who'd done the job 
and something had broken, something had seized. It wasn't the timing chain itself, it was it had a full engine rebuild. So I spent £6,600 having the engine rebuilt. So there's a car I wish I'd never bought. Anyway, uh, this is another interesting one, right. I buy some interesting cars on this channel, don't I? I bought a cheap Nissan Navara pickup truck. I paid £1,500 for it and it was a top spec with leather, sat nav, reverse camera. It was automatic as well. And it was quite a nice car from the driver's side. From the passenger side, it looked like it had been in a war zone, which ironically is where it is now. It was sold very cheaply to a mate of mine, the same mate I was talking about before, who then packed it full of supplies and drove it to Ukraine. Not before though, he painted it in camo colours and it looked really cool actually. So I'm hoping that is fighting the good fight. Do you remember back in May last year, I bought what I thought was a quite a cheap Mercedes A-Class, but it was one of the scruffiest cars I've ever bought. It was taken in part exchange and we stood it at £1,200, which was about £1,000 too much. I sold it to a mate of mine for £1,000, thinking it's probably worth £2,000 if he, you know, tarts it up a little bit, makes it look a bit nicer. Anyway, 18 months later, he sold it for £600. So I said that I would take the loss or share the loss with him. That wasn't a good buy, but I, I knew that on the day. As soon as I saw it on this car park, I thought, someone's made a massive mistake here. Oh, this was a car that I wish I'd never bought as well. Right, this was an Aston Martin DB7, a beautiful low mileage one owner car. And I think we paid something like £32,000 for it. Spent maybe £500 on it and then had it for an eternity. Just wouldn't sell at all. In the end, I thought the best decision really was to put it in a classic car auction. So I did that, took some really nice photographs of it, made a nice write-up about it, and then it sold for, you ready for this? 27,000 pounds. Four and a half grand loss. Oh well. Well, I think I'll leave it there then for today. Otherwise we'll be here all day. Hopefully that answered some questions and filled in some blanks. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Nearly got those two confused. And yeah, cheers guys. See you next time. <laughs>